Yeah, thanks a lot for the invitation. It's a, a pleasure to be at the school and I guess also a pleasure to, to give this course. So, well, as it was just introduced, we want to give an introduction to you know, a categorical approach, say, to periodic local Langlands. And, um, well, somehow I want to emphasize um, that, well, we are not trying to do a categorical approach because it's a fancy thing to do at the moment, but uh, actually that um, attaching, in some sense, sheaves on space of Gallup representations to representation theoretic data has been around in number theory for, for quite a while. Um, and the kind of two cases I'm thinking about when I, so I say this uh, is the taylor Wall's patching method and uh, is what's called eigenvarieties. And that I want to uh, explain a little bit. And if you want to convince someone, I guess the most convincing case usually is GL2. Uh, so that's why the first talk is devoted to GL2 and completed cohomology of modular curves. All right, so let's start with the non-completed case, so kind of the, in some sense, classical cohomology of modular curves. And uh, so what's my setting? I want to consider an adelic um, modular curve, or maybe it's compactification. So I fix a level subgroup, so that's supposed to be a product over KL at the various primes L in GL2 of the finite adults. That's supposed to be a level subgroup, and then I can attach to this this XK, which is the compactification or the canonical compactification of um, the moduli space of elliptic curves of level k. Which is, uh, well, as you have seen uh, in this uh, series of lectures on Schwimmer varieties, so it's a compactification of uh, the Q model, or the canonical Q model of this adelic double quotient where you take C with the wheels removed times GL2 of the finite adels, and then here you mod out by our level subgroup K, and then you mod out on the right by GL2 of Q. Okay, so that's the Q variety uh, I'm interested in, and uh, I'm interested in, uh, in its uh, cohomology because cohomology in some sense uh, should realize uh, or should be compatible with uh, local Langlands correspondences. And uh, I don't just want to do it for the cohomology with constant coefficients, uh, even though you maybe as a first approximation should just stick to it. But uh, let's fix xi, uh, which is maybe xi1 and xi2 and x upper star of uh, diagonal torus, um, a dominant coweight, sorry, a dominant character, um, then attached to xi, I get an algebraic representation, an irreducible algebraic representation. of the group GL2. Uh, and attached to this algebraic representation uh, V xi of GL2, I can construct out of this v, uh, so curly V xi a local system uh, on xk. Uh, okay, and uh, well, I kind of didn't carefully explain what my coefficients are supposed to be. Um, so it's a local system of maybe ZP modules or QP vector spaces. 
Okay, so if you don't like this local system, then really just think of the constant sheaf uh, QP, or maybe ZP. All right, so we are interested in the cohomology of this guy. So what is it? Uh, so we're interested in the cohomology, and the only interesting one, in some sense, will be the H1 um, of uh, the modular curve with coefficients in this uh, coefficient system. Okay, which is equipped, sorry, I base change to Q bar so that I get a Galois action. So it comes with an action of the absolute Galois group uh, of Q, and it comes with a Hecker action. Okay, so uh, I don't want to maybe precisely write down the Hecker algebra, but there is a Hecker action on it that, as you make the, your group smaller and smaller, in some sense will propagate and to give you a representation. So if we consider what I just want to abbreviate by H1 of the xi, which is the direct limit over all k as k gets smaller and smaller of these cohomologies. And then on this object, you still have the action of the absolute Galois group, and you have a smooth action of GL2 of the finite Adels. And you can get back from here to upstairs by just taking k invariance. Okay, so this is this object I introduced downstairs, and you just take k invariance. And so you'll also certainly see which hacker algebra acts, namely the hacker algebra of chi, k by invariant functions on GL2 of the finite adels. Okay, so that's the object we are interested in, and the following theorem which is called local global compatibility, or maybe local global compatibility for the modular curve, oh. um, tells you what it is in terms uh, of the local Langlands uh, correspondence. So this big representation, H1 of V lambda, decomposes as a direct sum over the finite part of Automorphic representation, or maybe I should, well, it's the other way around as I've chosen these order of the groups. So you have the Galois representation, the two dimensional Galois representation attached to an automorphic representation times the finite part uh, of this automorphic representation, and you just sum up over all pi, well, that you write as pi infinity times uh, tensor pi f, which is a cuspidal automorphic representation. Cuspidal automorphic representation of GL2, um, such that the infinitesimal character of pi infinity is given by xi. I somehow managed to write lambda. So that's supposed to be xi, okay? So, well, if xi is trivial, so if you consider constant coefficients and you maybe prefer modular forms instead of uh, automorphic representations, then this condition on the infinitesimal, infinitesimal character just tells you that you look at modular forms of weight 2. Okay, so that's nothing too scary. Okay, so that's local global uh, compatibility. Um, well, as um, a representation gal q times gl2 af representation. And this rho pi, well, I already said it, but this is the Galois representation attached to the automorphic, the cuspidal automorphic representation pi. Okay, and how they're characterized? It's characterized by the fact that if uh, rho, you take rho pi and you restrict it to a local Galois group. Uh, sorry, not off. 
the Galois group of so disk decomposition group at some prime L. Um, and then you maybe don't want the Galois representation, but you want to pass from a Galois representation to a Bailey-Lean representation. Which maybe, if L is not P, is not such a big difference. Um, so this corresponds to the L component um, of your automorphic representation uh, under local length lens, at least up to twist. Okay, so this is the, the, the length lens power parameter of pi L twisted by, I guess it's the determinant to minus one half. I hope my normalization uh, is correct. So this is uh, local length. Okay, so this gives you a pretty explicit, well, it depends for whether you consider this to be explicit, uh, but uh, besides this, it's a rather explicit uh, description of what the cohomology of this uh, modular curve is, and you certainly deduce as a corollary that, hence, this guy here can be written as a sum over all pi's, and here you have rho pi, and then here you just have the k-fixed vectors in this uh, finite part. And well, the index set is certainly the same over here. Good. Okay, so I want to make a remark, namely, basically because of multiplicity one, I guess, uh, as the index set, instead of taking the automorphic uh, um, representations, I could take also the Galois representations that are automorphic as an index, uh, index set. Okay, so we can index the direct sum Uh, as well by the automorphic Galois representations. Well, so those Galois representations that come as the Galois representation attached to a cuspidal uh, automorphic form, and you can also read this infinitesimal character out of the Galois representation by looking at the hodge tate rates. Okay, so of hodge tate rates well, say lambda, which is psi 1 plus 1 psi 2. So there's some kind of shift from the representation theoretic weights to the hodge tate weights. And according to the fontaine mesa conjecture, you have a Galois theoretic description uh, of what automorphic Galois representation means. According to the fontaine mesa conjecture, there was a Galois theoretic characterization of those. Okay, so what is it? Um, so that's the fontaine mesa conjecture. So FM being fontaine mesa, I at least wrote it once which uh, at least say for p larger or equal to 5 um, is, uh, is a theorem of uh, Hissin, Emerton, and uh, Louis Pan. Um, so what does the conjecture say? So um, the conjecture says, so let rho of GQ to GL2 QP be an irreducible and odd representation, irreducible odd continuous, which is anomified almost everywhere at 
and the RAM with regular hot state rates at P, uh, then rho is attached to a cuspidal automorphic representation. Uh, maybe, yes, but if it's true for QP, then it's, uh, uh, for QP bar, it's true for QP as well. <laughs> okay, yeah, thanks, I want QP bar. Then rho is associated to a cuspidal automorphic representation of GL2. All right, so that's maybe something one wants to know. Um, whether this index set and the direct sum up there um, can be described in Galois theoretic terms. Okay, so whether nice Galois representation are attached to automorphic ones. Where was this? Oh, got it. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so this is in some sense a classical picture, uh, but we want to do something p-adic, okay? So uh, let's move from cohomology to completed cohomology. Okay, so which uh, follows an idea of, uh, oh, which is the idea of uh, Caligari and Emerton. So instead of fixing a level subgroup K, we only fix this level subgroup away from P. Okay, so we fix K upper P, oh, and maybe assume that it decomposes. So in the finite ideals, away from P, compact open. And out of this, we form the completed cohomology, uh, which is called H1 tilde K upper P. Okay, so what do you do? Well, you do cohomology with torsion coefficients uh, at some level. So you add some level at P, um, consider cohomology with torsion coefficients, say over Z mod P to the RZ, um, and then take the direct limit over all possible levels at P, so you make it smaller and smaller. Uh, and after that, so the order certainly is important here, uh, you take the inverse limit so that you end up over ZP, uh, okay? And um, what kind of action does it carry? It has the action of the absolute Galois group. It has the action of the full GL2 of QP. And it has some hacker action away from P. OK, so that's basically because at P, we made everything as deep as possible. And uh, well, because you kind of, on the torsion level, go to, uh, go to as small level as possible, you make this rather big. And then after that, you take the inverse limit, so you end up with a huge thing, okay? And this um, is really extremely infinite dimensional, but it's also periodically complete. So it's kind of a, well, you maybe should think of this as a GL2 QP stable, uh, ZP letters in uh, QP banner space representation of GL2 QP. So you're really in the in the world of uh, well 
And in a world of periodic binary space representation, or lattices there in, 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 uh, in some yeah, really completed uh, world. Okay, that's what this object is. And one of the main features why it's nice, it recovers all the cohomologies that I've been talking about before. Okay, so completed cohomology recovers um, the classical case. The classical cohomologies. By classical, I just mean those that I've been talking about before. Uh, okay, and this is the following proposition. So, I mean, for these classical cohomologies, I need a full level, so I have to add uh, some uh, level uh, at P. And then I can recover my um, cohomology H1 um, xk v xi uh, just from the completed cohomology uh, h tilde 1 away from p if I hom into this over k, uh, kp um, the um, well, dual of the algebraic representation v xi. Okay, so if xi was trivial, this in some sense uh, would be uh, invariance. But uh, I really, really want to emphasize, even though here I didn't take any coefficient system, I just took constant coefficients. Uh, okay, I can, from the completed version, I can recover all of these, uh, all of these coefficient systems. Okay, so basically because, well, of course, um, when you take algebraic representations uh, and uh, maybe get a lattice in there and reduce the modular powers of p, you will find a lot of, con uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of congruences, okay, which, uh, which uh, allow you on a congruence level, if you make the, the level deeper, um, well, will recover things of different weight well, up, to, up to some p power. And then if you complete and get, get to the limit, uh, you kind of have a chance to see everything. All right. Um, Sorry? Which, which theorem? This, the proposition? Uh, this holds on integral level. Like you should maybe of v, uh, think of uh, this v xi as an integral system and this v xi, so, so this, this curly v is a zp system and this algebraic representation you maybe should think of as its uh, canonical model over, over zp. And So we've seen before that um, there are some kind of local global compatibility, which uh, tells you that you can describe the cohomology on the left-hand side uh, completely in, in local terms. And so you might wonder whether for this completed cohomology they were the similar thing. And there is, which is um, the local global compatibility Compatibility for completed H1, um, which is maybe, which is a theorem of Hamilton's, and um, so let me give the following formulation: Let rho of the absolute Galois group over Q to GL2QP be a continuous Pierre de Galois representation. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so then, I'm sorry, I'm too tall to uh, make, keep this blackboard visible. Um, then you wanna look at the contribution of rho to this completed cohomology. So if you look at the corresponding eigenspace that you might express as the maps of rho into completed cohomology. Well, maybe here I have to invert p, otherwise it doesn't make sense to hom this into that. Um, and this uh, is of the form pi of rho restricted to p. I'm going to come back to what this is. And maybe at the places away from p, you still have some kind of Hacker module, which is uh, what you might expect it is. So let me just write this as work inverse, so local Langlands inverse of uh, rho L uh, twisted by, sorry, uh, no, this way and then twisted by the determinant to the minus one half. Um, so it's kind of similar to what appeared before, but like the, the main important thing for now maybe only is that this is a finite dimensional vector space. Uh, thanks, I forgot the fixed vectors, right? So uh, fixed vectors under KL. Otherwise, it's not likely to be finite dimensional. Um, Uh, why it's the right hand side, otherwise it's not, uh, maybe non-zero, okay? Thanks. Um, which is uh, odd and irreducible. So this should only see odd representations, whereas this maybe is non-zero if, uh, uh, if rho was not odd. Um, I can't hear it. Okay. I'm ramified almost everywhere. What? Thanks. Uh, this is not assuming the Fontaine Maser, but in the end, it uh, will prove the Fontaine Maser. I'm maybe going to explain this. Uh, oh, like I should ask Matt. P has to be greater or equal to five? You should expect that it should hold in general, but maybe it's uh, not a Like for this talk, I'm completely fine assuming that P is large enough whenever I want to. Uh, so you should keep this in mind maybe. Okay, but I didn't tell you what uh, P of rho P is. Um, so well, pi of rho P, this is the Periodic Banner space representations, uh, the periodic uh, Banner space representation representation of GL2QP attached to rho P by the periodic local Langlands correspondence. Okay, so that's something I at least want to recall something about so that it's on the board. At least one. So that's uh, the work of well, many people uh, initiated by Christoph Breu and then with a tremendous amount of contribution by uh, Cole Mess, um, but also kind of, uh, Gabriel Dospinescu. Um, Peters Pascunas, uh, Emerton, Kissin, Berger. Well, I mean, certainly many more. Um, I hope, like, at least I maybe have 
some of the most, some people uh, the most important contributors on the board, um, which tells you that there exists a map. Maybe this map exists over here. From so this is a map, kind of some mapping some R to pi of R from two-dimensional continuous representations uh, of the Galois group of QP on QP banner, uh, on QP vector spaces. Oh two-dimensional QP representations of the absolute Galois group of QP. It's a map maybe from isomorphism classes of such to uh, what's called admissible unitary um, QP banner space representations. of GL2 QP. Uh, well, maybe I should add an epsilon more, an epsilon more here, but uh, uh, like that admit a central uh, character, for example. Uh, but okay, just in order to have a, a map, it's maybe fine to omit this. So unitary just meaning that uh, similar to this computer cohomology groups that just have this feature, um, they have a stable uh, ZP lattice. Okay, and admissible, I guess I don't want to dive into. Um, so this induces, this map induces a bijection between uh, absolutely irreducible objects. And, well, have maybe several more nice properties that I'm uh, not going to get into, uh, at least not for now. But even if I would write down a list, I would uh, hardly end up with a list that would uniquely characterize this thing. Okay, so that's, uh, well, kind of characterizing this is uh, one of the mysteries, and generalizing uh, this is maybe uh, even a more mysterious mystery. So, Let's have the following two remarks here. Okay, so this is something for GL2QP. Okay, and so far it's specific for, uh, for GL2QP. So we don't know um, what a periodic local Langness correspondence should be. Maybe let's say not clear, uh, because maybe it's part of the aim of these talks, uh, convincing you that there now maybe is a way uh, to see what this should be. So not clear what a lo uh, periodic local Langlands correspondence should be beyond the case of GL2QP. And, well, part of the difficulty is that we have no clue how to characterize it. How to characterize something. Uh, how to characterize it. And in some sense, the only hint that you have, or the only thing that you definitely wanted to satisfy, um, is given by, this, by the theorem, okay? So the, the only hint comes from a desired local global compatibility with computed cohomology of Shimura varieties. Um, kind of the, let, let me kind of be rough and say the only hint is that it should have a local global compatibility with computer cohomology. Uh, 
Uh, okay, and maybe I can leave the left and the white boards as blackboards with remarks about periodic local angles. Just to clarify, you're saying that some suitable generalization of the theorem should hold for. Well, I mean, what what I mean is that uh, well, if you have some periodic local Langlands correspondence for GLNF for some local field F, um, well, then you would like it to satisfy some local global compatibility with the completed cohomology of a Shimo variety whose factor, at least at some place, dividing P is GLNF. That's, that's what this is uh, supposed to mean. Okay, and well, the last remark about this is that this field, in some sense, was a little bit stuck in the past years. Was stuck for some time. So maybe. Uh, there has been a lot of euphoria when it was developed, uh, but then people realized that beyond GL2QP, everything is so much harder. So um, let me mention one feature of this being so much harder be, uh, beyond GL2QP, uh, um, which is that there are, in a rough form, too many mysterious um, representations of GLNF. So mysterious kind of p adic or mod p. Okay, and to make it a little bit more precise, and uh, um, this will be elaborated on somehow a lot in the last lecture of this course, uh, Brian Pascunas. showed that already for kind of the groups that you might think is better accessible, like the, the easiest accessible group after GL2 might be GL2 uh, of QP squared, okay? So, but even for uh, GL2 QP squared, uh, they found out that there exists an infinite family of irreducible or admissible irreducible representations of GL2 of QP squared that look like they should all be attached to the same local Galois representation. And attached to the same local Galois representation kind of well, means it's kind of hinted by computed cohomology. Okay, that looks like yeah. that, uh, let's say, appear to be associated to the same local Gallo representation. Which is certainly a bad thing if you want to build a bijection or even a finite to one map. I mean, this is really an, an, uh, an infinite uh, family. Okay. So this is what periodic Langlands for GL2QP is about, and that's also maybe a reason why there have been lots of problems uh, generalizing this beyond this case. But, I don't want to worry about this for this talk because I just want to get back to the case of GL2 and the modular curve, where I'm just in the local case dealing with GL2 QP. May I, may I ask a, a L different from P question? An L different from P question? I don't know. Let's let's see. <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the blackboard, which is the even? Yes. This one? Yeah, is it just a 
Okay, the question is whether it's here really the um, periodic, uh, the, uh, at the places away from P, whether really the local Langlands correspondence occurs or whether it rather should be some kind of a variant where you, in some sense, disregard the characters and replace them by, by an induction which have, which have these characters as a quotient. And that's uh, most likely the correct thing, but I think I don't want to erase it and write it out like this. Yeah. So if this representation here happens to be a character, you have to modify it a little bit. Thanks. Okay, so I said I wanted to convince you that in some sense sheaves occur in this matter. Um, so I want to talk about families and sheaves. Okay, and the basic observation is um, that if you want to compute, so the H1 of, I don't know, xk, vxi, so these cohomology groups, this is something finite, okay? It's a discrete, uh, so the finite direct sum. Well, in the direct sum decomposition that I've wrote down above. So only finitely many Gallo representations contribute. On the other hand, this completed cohomology okay, um, is of a different nature. Namely, for this H tilde 1 kp, as you see above, in some sense, all irreducible, odd, anomified almost everywhere um, representations contribute. Okay? All odd. Irreducible, unramified almost everywhere. Uh, Gallo representations uh, contribute. And these Pierre de Gallo representations here really come in families. Okay? So you maybe rather should view this guy as a family of representations over. Um, over a space of Gallo representations. And I want to make this maybe a little bit more precise. So let's cook up some wing or some, some kind of hacker algebra over which this guy lives. Okay, so I can look at um, the finite piece it's, it's made of. Um, so I can look at TR. Uh, which is supposed to be the image of the circle hacker algebra. So it takes a tensor product over the usual spherical hacker algebras at QL. So this here is really a spherical hacker algebra. But it's a nice commutative algebra, um, which, which, sorry, here's an L, which acts on all these cohomology groups, okay? Um, and so you take, where do you let it act? You let it act on This torsion guy that um, your complete cohomology is made of by taking the inverse limit over all R. So this hacker algebra certainly acts here. Okay? And so you can take the image uh, in this uh, anamorphism ring, which is something living over that mod P to the R. So you might uh, like to take the inverse limit, so which I want to denote by T. Um, so it's uh, inverse limit over all these TRs, and uh, it has the nice feature that it acts on completed cohomology. And, uh, well, it's commuting, so compatible with the Galois action 
uh, and the GL2 QP action, of course. They just commute because kind of comes out of the construction. Yes? Your level away from P is fixed, right? My level away from P is fixed, yes. So this tensor, I was confused by the index K of uh, So this L are not equal to P, and I just like have this KL, and I just take those L uh, for which KL is maximal complex. Ah. So I just wanted to disregard the contribution of the hacker action at places where the hacker algebra might not be commutative. That's the only reason. Okay, so then it turns out that T as a product of Tm. So it's a product of, so it's a semi local wing, it's a product of complete local Noetherian wings. Tm, and this product is indexed by the maximal ideals of T. Okay, so indexed by, by maximal ideals M of T. So it's a semi local way. Um, and in some sense, I always want to stick to one of these factors um, because given M, such a maximal ideal. It's not a map. It's kind of. To some of these maximal ideals, I have a residual Gal representation attached to this. Okay, so it's a representation of Gal QS to GL2 F P bar. The associated residual Gal representation. Um, where maybe uh, S is the set of uh, contains P and all the L such that KL is not maximal compact. Okay. Then the construction of Galois representations um, attached to modular forms or automorphic representation uh, tells you that on the swing TM, you can construct, well, maybe if not a Galois representation, then at least uh, a Galois pseudo character. Okay, but I don't want to distinguish between these two and also want to avoid some other uh, difficulties. Hence, from now on, I just want to assume that rho bar m is absolutely irreducible. Was there a question? Okay. Sorry. I just want to assume this. Um, then uh, the construction of Galois representations implies implies that we have a canonical map of R rho bar to, okay, I will forgot the M all over the place, so it's just R rho bar, um, to Tm, where R rho bar is the universal deformation wing of rho, which at the same time is the universal pseudo deformation wing, so the universal deformation wing of the pseudo representation associated to rho. Okay, and here the reason is that rho bar is absolutely reducible. 
I don't want to really define for you what pseudo representations are, but rather than considering a representation, you would consider, well, its traces, respectively, the coefficient of its characteristic polynomial, which satisfies some Kelly Hamilton identities and deform these. And, well, that's actually something which is more related to, uh, to, to the Hecker algebra because kind of eigenvalues of certain elements, or, or like, <laughs> the eigenvalues of certain elements in, in the Hecker algebra should be linked to coefficients of the characteristic polynomial of Rubini E and so on. Okay, so something like this you actually usually rather want to do with the pseudo deformation ring, but in nice situation it happens that it just is the same as deforming the Galois representation. All right. So, what do you get from this? All right, so then in summary, uh, you see that you have this map from a Galois deformation ring to um, this uh, Hecker algebra, which acted on completed cohomology. Well, maybe not all of it, but uh, I want to localize this. Uh, uh, at M, uh, so that only this part of the Hecker algebra acts, okay? But you have an action of this wing on completed cohomology, which tells you that somehow you should think of H tilde 1 M is a family of um, uh, Banner space representations or lattices therein. Um, over the deformation space of Galois representations. Okay, in some sense, just because this guy acts, but um, for technical purposes, you maybe rather would like to consider this family as a sheaf. Uh, for technical purposes, it's better to stick to the dual of this guy. Um, why? Because is local global compatibility still on the board? It's not. But if you remember its statement, then what you did in cohomology for a given Galois representation is it took the eigenspace. So you didn't specialize by kind of, um, um, kind of go going from here to and specializing at some, some prime ideal or something like this, but you rather took an eigenspace. So the, if you want, so fiber of this family at a given Galois representation was a subobject rather than a quotient, okay? And this goes away if you dualize and it's rather, uh, a rather convenient thing to do. And uh, that's what I want to do. So better uh, to consider complete what's called completed homology so which is by definition just the dual well for some reason I chose to write prime for duals so it's just the Hom over ZP of completed homology into ZP, okay, which still, of course, has an action of the Galois deformation wing, which is a module. Just a second. Okay, so when you take this dual, 
you still have, it's a still a module over here, and you still have an action of GL2QP or GL2ZP, and it turns out that it just becomes a module over the completed group ring over here, which is finally generated over, well, this group ring for the maximal compact subgroup, which then still has a compatible action with the rest of GL2QP, which would give you this ring. There was a question? H1 tilde, thanks, of course. Yes, everything is with ZP coefficients. So the Galois representation there are corresponding much more ideal with uh, the SP coefficients? Um, the Galois represent. Well, I mean, this is a residual. Like, the Fekker algebra lives over ZP, so its maximal ideal certainly are supported in sure. the special fiber. Um, and uh, <laughs> okay, okay. then the Galois representation attached to this maximal ideal certainly also should sit in the special fiber. What? Well, in well, in some finite extension in between, like it's defined over some finite extension in between. What? So, like, the answer was that, like, I should rather maybe consider um, row bar as um, the representation with values in GL two not of FP bar, but of the weather due field uh, of the Hecker algebra at this maximal ideal, okay? All right. Where maybe, like, it's maybe not defined there, but at least kind of its per corresponding pseudo representation is defined there, and, uh, but I wanted to escape all these subtleties, I mean, like this. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so why is it better to do this? I already said it, but maybe uh, want to write it because then, um, um, well, in order to specialize to a periodic representation, uh, say, rho, which corresponds to P rho, a prime ideal in. So we would rather like to specialize in the, the sense of taking a, a tensor product than uh, to take an eigenspace, okay? So we should rather want to specialize. So by specialize, I mean tensor-wise over the deformation wing with the whether you feel at this point, um, rather than taking the eigenspace. for this prime idea. Okay, so it really rather looks like a sheaf if we specialize this way. All right. And now you do really have a nice family, which in some sense also has uh, full support. So this is the following theorem that one might call poor modularity, or sometimes it's also called big R equal to big T. Um, which says that there are maybe two different statements or similar statements. So let's assume that Kp is sufficiently small. Um, then the map from this Galois deformation wing uh, to this uh, big Hecker algebra uh, is an isomorphism. 
Okay, and another uh, and well, something that you can deduce from local global compatibility that we had before is that um, so for. Um, well, n spec r bar maybe with p inverted, um, we have that from gal q of rho to the h1 tilde is non-zero. So basically, the observation is as uh, this periodic local Langlands correspondence, chi of rho p is non-zero. And then kp sufficiently small is supposed to assure that this contribution from places away from, uh, away from p actually is a non-zero vector space. Uh, okay, so it, this is non-zero, which means that this sheaf of uh, representations, so this, uh, uh, I want to put it as a slogan, the sheaf h tilde 1 of kp, and then you take, sorry, it has a name, so complete homology, h lower 1 tilde of kp has full support. All right. Okay, so I want to talk more about support of, uh, of sheaves, of modules. Um, and about modularity. I kind of want to convince you that knowing the support of certain sheaves that you cook up from, uh, from this kind of universal guy um, will tell you whether a representation, a Gallo representation, is modular or not. And so we want to view the following guy. Namely, I take the HOM. Oh, okay. So for, let's take some KP in GL2 of ZP compact open. And maybe for simplicity, I just only want to take GL2 QPs. Uh, um, okay. So, I'm supposed to look at this object. And then I hope I convinced you that it's better, better to take duals. So I want to take the dual of this module, um, which um, is the dual of uh, some cohomology group that I had in the beginning, right? Um, and you will. And uh, maybe I want to localize everything at my ideal M, so I have to localize uh, this as well. And I maybe want to write this as the HOM over GL2 of QP of the compact induction of this guy. So this is what is kind of a locally algebraic representation. 
Okay, it's not it's not smooth because this guy here is not smooth. It's algebraic, but it's then end up being locally algebraic. And you hum this representation into this completed cohomology, uh, and then uh, take the dual of this, um, and this is a module over the Galois deformation ring, just because this guy here was a module uh, over this. So we view this guy, this module, as a coherent sheaf uh, on, well, I don't know, maybe let's say spiff r rho bar, which is the uh, most natural thing, which certainly has finite support. Okay, like it's, this cohomology is contributed to only by finitely many Galois representations. But we would very much like to know what its support is, okay, because then we would be able to prove modularity. Um, so if, if we knew that the support was kind of given by all <coughs> Galois representations that are maybe crystalline at P with hot state rates related to Xi, then we would prove uh, modularity. <coughs> um, as the coherent chief and uh, uh, I want to give it a name. I maybe want to, want to, want to call it A of uh, of this guy. Okay. So this is the first coherent sheaf that occurs. So it's a coherent sheaf which is attached to a representation. Um, even though it's in some sense just doing it by hand, uh, there are no functor not very many functorial things about it. Uh, I mean, like, I could have a functorial functoriality for maps that come induced from maps over KP, but kind of not anything else. Um, okay, so let me point this out that according to Fontaine Mesa, Um, the support of this guy uh, can be described as follows. Okay, so, and for simplicity, I really want to take Kp to be GL2 of Zp. The picture is a little bit larger, so I maybe allow myself to take a new blackboard. Oh, that didn't work out very well. Okay, I'll just take it. Oh, okay, so what's the picture? I have here spiff of R bar, which maps to a product of local deformation rings. So, well, so the, the bad places L and F, which are not P. Um, and then I also here have Okay, and here I would like to describe what the support of this coherent chief is, which is a closed subspace. Okay, and so according to the fontaine mesa conjecture, you know what this is um, if you just kind of put local conditions. Okay, and what are these local conditions? So. Well, the most important thing maybe happens here, that you take a crystalline deformation ring, um, 
uh, yeah, so this here is a crystalline deformation ring. Um, of rho bar for Hodge Tate waves. Lambda, which is F before Xi1 plus 1, and then Xi2. And, well, uh, I mean, I mean, I could also write something explicit here. Um, I guess for time constraints, I will not do this. But you, in some sense, should cut out the subspace of Galois representation such that the corresponding um, GL2 QP, uh, the GL2 QL representation under local Langlands has invariance under a certain subgroup. Okay, but like, there was a way to, to, to characterize what this is supposed to be, uh, but maybe uh, I'm kind of not making it explicit, but um, for us, the most important thing is happening at P. All right, so let me call this star for a second. Okay, according to the fontaine mesa conjecture, the support of the Skuiwin sheaves should just be the pullback of something where locally you prescribe what, uh, what a, well, uh, a closed subspace, okay? But there should be an upgrade and the upgrade is that the sheaf itself that you have here should be a pullback of a sheaf on here um, which has this support, and which maybe even factors as an exterior product of sheaves on the individual factors. Okay, so the upgrade is, let's say, that's rather than expectation than uh, something that uh, one can prove uh, at the moment. Uh, the sheaf A of Compact induction the xi dual is a pullback of a coherent sheaf on this product um, with support. Okay, and uh, this coherent sheaf that I envision over here, I certainly should also view this as a coherent sheaf attached to this representation. All right. Um, okay, so that even should factor. Uh, as an exterior product. So exterior tensor product on the factors. Okay, and uh, I should maybe think of the factor at P as the Kui when sheaves that is attached to this p representation of GL2QP. Okay. So, in some sense, this is a rather brutal upgrade uh, of uh, what the Fontaine made the conjecture told us in the first place. Okay, I'm just about closed subspaces, and now I suddenly say, okay, it would be really nice if this are just given by supports of sheaves. Um, but actually, at least to some extent, this is precisely what the taylor wiles method uh, was doing, um, and the taylor wiles method is what was usually, well, like, in some sense, always uh, used to prove conjectures like the fontaine mesa conjecture. And that's going to be the... Exactly, yeah, so the question was, uh, 
was that the, the, the fact that uh, I put the crystalline deformation wing there corresponds to that I took for simplicity the choice of Kp being maximal compact, so being GL2 Zp. I could take some other groups as well, so like I could take sema stable before us or poten uh, potentially sema stable or potentially crystalline deformation rings um, of some given type. Um, and then I would kind of just, well, have another KP, but maybe also not have the trivial representation, but really have some kind of type uh, for, for some Bernstein block. But, uh, but you, you can make this, uh, well, fairly precise to, to well, recover a similar story for all possible kinds of, well, potentially crystalline, potentially semi-stable deformation rings. But then instead of this periodic representation, compact induction from GL2ZP to GL2QP of, uh, of weak psi dual, you would just see some other kind of locally algebraic representation. All right, so, and this may be the, the main point I want to make, and uh, this was the, what I alluded to uh, in the very beginning, that there's a relation to what's called patching. Um, or equivalently, the taylor watts method, and it's only a very rough story. Okay, so the taylor watts method which is kind of a, just a different name of uh, what's sometimes called the patching method, uh, constructs the following data. A presentation of the global deformation wing um, as a quotient well, of local deformation wings respectively of a power series over such. Okay, so you can present the global deformation wing over the local deformation wings. Um, and it also constructs for you finitely generated modules Let me call them M infinity of Xi over R infinity, such that, well, M infinity of Xi, if you specialize it over this R infinity to your global deformation wing, then you get the module or the coherent sheaf you're interested in. So this A of C and uh, V Xi dual. Okay, um, that's something, well, I like this. This is nothing conjectural. This was precisely kind of this, uh, um, the thing which is given by the cohomology of modular curves. Okay, so it's a, it's a concrete object. Um, and it also tells you that you know that M infinity of Xi is supported on a union of irreducible components of, ha, it's on the board. It's a space star, okay, where your local sheaf is supposed to live, the conjectural local sheaf. Okay, so you, you would like to have it full support. So if you prove that it has full support, uh, then you have proved modularity. Um, a priori, you don't know it, but at least you know that the support is a union of irreducible components. Okay, so we'd like to have so, so like proof that it has full support means proving modularity. Okay, and maybe I have one or one and a half minutes. Like two. I will just need one more uh, blackboard.
So like, like from, okay, I'll maybe just stick to what I uh, want to say. So there's a following generalization of the Taylor Wiles method by Karayani, Hamilton, and G. Garrity, Pashkunas, and Shin, which tells you that you can not only patch cohomology or homology of modular curves, so you can not only kind of uh, do this at finite level, but that you can also patch or do the taylor wiles method with completed cohomology instead. Okay, so this would cook up some m infinity over r infinity and then the completed group ring of GL2QP uh, such that for some point x, maybe it's it. A maximal ideal of R infinity after inverting P. This maps down to some local Galois representation, rho P at P. Uh, so in the local deformation wing at P, if you specialize this family at X, um, well, the module you see here is precisely the dual of the periodic local Langlands correspondence. So, if you do this and you dualize back, uh, then you get the periodic local Langlands correspondence. Well, maybe up to some. Uh, some multiplicity which is given by the factors uh, away from P. So this kind of is the periodic local Langlands correspondence. For GL2QP and these M infinities of Xi uh, that I had before, they are precisely the the dual of this from KP of weak side dual into the dual of M infinity. So this dual of M infinity is in some sense the patched version of uh, completed cohomology. Okay, so that's the patched version of completed cohomology. Sorry. Uh, and maybe you can rewrite this as the m infinity and you turn the over the completed group, group ring Zp Kp with weak side dual, uh, I guess. Um, so that's what, um, what this patching method does. And the point I want to emphasize is that Patching gives you um, a way to produce interesting modules which live over something that is close to the local Galois deformation wing, um, that, and these modules are attached to representation theoretic data. In fact, kind of you expect or you want them to be kind of not defined over R infinity, but rather you want that they are pulled back to R infinity from something which is really intrinsically defined on the local deformation wings. Okay, and the latter one is the thing that we are hoping for, that you can, in some sense, functorially attach to representations, uh, well, sheaves on these local um, deformation spaces, say, um, and, well, this, what these sheaves, in some sense, should be, or candidates of these sheaves, have been studied in the Tyler Wells method, actually, for a rather long time. And I guess I should stop here. I'm already over time, and wow, well, yeah, okay, that's it. So, questions?
being asked the question. It is completed homology is a module for Galois group, GL2, and the Hecke algebra. Yes. Some semi simplicity property. Uh, third again? Does it have some semi simplicity property? Um, so this, the question was, um, this complete cohomology is a module or the, uh, has an action of um, the, the Galois group, some hacker action away from P, and um, of GL2QP. Um, and the question was whether there's some semi-simplicity property. And, um, well, I mean, this whole thing, while there's a family, so there are, um, then no real semi-simplicity property. It, it, you should imagine this, or maybe it's dual, as, as a family of representations, um, which is in, I guess if I say, which is in some sense pure, this is kind of over-exaggerating, but it kind of should not have any isolated components. Like the, 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 there shouldn't be a, a subsheaf which has a, a support, a, a proper subset of a, of the modular space of, of scalar representations. Maybe the classical analogy is that it's a direct integral. Sorry? The classical analogy is that it looks like a direct integral. It's not a direct sum over a finite or countable set. It looks, like a, kind of, with two it looks like a direct integral over a whole space. Even after tensoring with two people. Yes. I mean, this is a vague story, so yeah, we could say it has to. Maybe it has some finiteness properties for gl 2 p um, so, I mean, like, first of all, maybe I should say for the, for the mic that, uh, like, um, what Matt said is that you maybe in some wake or rough analogy should imagine this, this family rather like being some, somehow uh, a direct integral rather than uh, a direct sum decomposition into something. Um, and um, then the, what was it? Ah, whether the GL2, in the GL2QP case, this has some finiteness properties, which I think I wrote at some point, but um, the dual of completed cohomology is a finitely generated module over the completed group ring um, of, um, of the maximal compact subgroup. That's the kind of finiteness properties of this family of periodic representations. Maybe a simple question. Do we know the dimensions of these big R's and big T's? Whether we know the dimension of these big R's and big T's? Um, well, yes. I mean, like in, in general, maybe only conjecturally in this uh, GL2 uh, uh, QP case, uh, I guess, uh, yes. Um, so, like they are two dimensional or three dimensional? Well, actually. Or, I mean, ZP. Yeah, okay, ZP doesn't count, kind of. The, the relative dimension over ZP is 3, right? Yeah. I have a question. So, uh, before you told us that this shift is supposed to be completely local and a factor of shift. So, these patched modules, to what extent are they just depending on local data and also to what extent are they canonical? Okay, so the question was that uh, I said before that the sheaf we wanted to have should be in some sense completely local. Uh, and so the question is to which extent these uh, patched modules, uh, M infinity, are known to be completely local and uh, on, on which uh, extra conditions they depend. Well, somehow, somehow they are. From the point of view of this question, these patching modules are rather bad because uh, they are highly uncanonical. They, they depend on infinitely many choices. Uh, like on the choice of a global situation, okay, maybe with these modular curves we have a fixed global situation, but still they would depend on infinitely many additional choices. So they are highly uncanonical. Um, in some very rare cases, uh, in the case of GL2, um, uh, I think it's known that they're completely local, like, um, well, like, this, uh, like these six authors, Kawiani, Emerton, G, Garrity, Pashkunas, and Shin, have a, have a second paper on, uh, on these patched modules and the local language correspondence for GL2QP, where they prove that in certain cases, 
Um, if you put yourself in a certain global setup that you also maybe have multiplicity one away from and at, at the bed primes, um, that uh, then this in M infinity is in fact uh, a family interpolating periodic local Langlands for GL2QP. So there, there are some results like this, but they are very rare. Like in, in general, with this patching match that uh, you have, well, I don't know whether I should say no hope to, to prove that these guys are completely local, but uh, like uh, in the situations where you can, you are in somehow in some sense very lucky. So this would be extremely hard. But a priori they are global, but you expect that they are exactly a priori by construction they are they are global objects, um, but the hope is that they are completely local and uh, where they basically you maybe can up. Come, come up with, with hopes like this. If you do some computation, then you, that you see that kind of all the things that you get out in some sense only depend on local data, and hence you, you might just be optimistic and hope that it's the case. But uh, like there's, there's no general philosophy why these patching modules should be completely local. But still, these are coherent sheaves that are attached to representation theoretic data that kind of have been studied for the, for the past 20 years. Let's thank you again again.